Here we go. Good. Hey, everybody, and welcome. Uh, my name is Sean Rauch. I'm the manual osteopath here at Holistic Healing Arts. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about a bunch of things, but one thing we're going to talk about first is posture uh, and how important it is to have good posture. So when you're mom and dad, we're like, you know, uh, squeeze those shoulders back, chest up. It's because we want to keep our spine in what's called an S-curve. The reason we want to get an S-curve going is because our spine acts like a spring. Okay? Now when we, um, so here you can see this is a healthy spine here, right? Okay? So we have this nice S-curve. So what that does is that absorbs impact and shock and all our upper body weight can rest on this, on these areas, on these discs, okay? Now, what do you think happens when we lose that S curve? Not all at once. <laughs> yeah, pain, sorry. Posture changes. Yeah, posture changes, yes. So when we get these postural changes, with these postural changes, such as these ones here, we get a bunch of different issues, right? So here's this guy, he's got good posture. Forward head posture, okay, this is one that's all on its own. Sway back, we lose, uh, we're, cause we're constantly, uh, we're constantly uh, tensing the glutes to get that sway back going on. We get a lot of lower back issues. We also get a lot of neck issues and a lot of, uh, a lot of pain here, okay? Uh, when someone is like this, okay, where do you think that would hurt? Yeah, lower back again. Also in the shoulders and we get a lot happening in the bottom here, okay? So, one particular one that is actually one of the worst ones that's facing people right now is the forward head. So, how many people have seen Jerry Maguire? Remember the little kid? He's like, the average head weighs eight pounds. Yeah, well, it doesn't actually. And especially not so in this day and age because for every inch forward that your head, your neck is jetted forward like this, you're putting an extra 10 to 15 pounds of pressure on these muscles here. So you don't want people like everybody squeeze your upper trap, these guys right here, right? They're probably pretty sore, right? Because that's what's supporting your neck all day. Now, for every inch forward, now push your head forward all the way. You feel how much more tense those are now? Now try and raise an arm when your head is that forward. It's a lot more difficult to do. Now bring that head back, raise that same arm, so much easier, right? Because that's the way we're supposed to be, right? It's all figured out. So, so what we're having, especially now with people on their cell phones all the time, is there's more and more kids going like this on their phones all day. So what we're doing is we're seeing kids in their 20s and stuff getting this thing called the Dowager's hump, which is this hump right here, which you only see in really old people who are on their walkers all the time. And that's because the body is worried that your head is gonna fall off. But what it does is it puts uh, fat deposits and everything right in that location there, and then you get that lump there. Okay? We're also finding that we're getting young people with horns on the back of their skulls. And again, that's because of that posture. Because again, when your body, see your body, your muscles and tendons, they need to cling on to something, okay? And they cling on to bones. And so usually if, uh, if you have a, uh, there'll be like little areas where, where the, uh, the tendons and stuff will lock on to. But when you take those uh, away, the body needs something. And because we're so far forward all the time with kids on their cell phones, they're developing these little spurs that the tendons can latch onto and hold onto better. So again, so the body doesn't think, oh, our head's gonna fall off, we have to do something, right? So the body is, I mean, our human body is amazing in so many ways, but it's kind of frugal and it's kind of dumb if you don't control it, okay? So, um, we are, I think we can all agree this, we are meant to move, right? If we look at our great-great-grandparents, okay, they moved all the time. They moved from place to place, they foraged, whatever, they were constantly moving, okay? Unfortunately, in this day and age, we don't move as much, and that's what's causing a lot of the issues, is this sedentary lifestyle. Because when you don't move, okay, now we're gonna talk about fascia. So we have all this, all this stuff around it, all, everything that covers it, everything that covers our muscles, everything that covers our organs, everything that covers everything is called fascia, right? And who's heard of fascia? Hey, all right, <laughs> sort of, yeah. okay. Well, we're gonna get into it, all right? So, um, so it connects all our connective tissues, so that means muscles, bones, tendons, ligaments, and blood, okay? It basically holds together the entire body, all right? 
Now there's four different kinds. There's structural, inter, inter, intersectoral, visceral, and spinal, but they're all connected, okay? So you gotta think of it like this. If you pull on your shirt, right, it wrinkles down here, right? Like sometimes when people stretch this way, they're like, oh, why do I feel that in my bad back? It's because everything is connected by your fascia, okay? So when it's healthy, it's flexible, supple, and it glides, and we can move. When it's not, then we run into problems. So here's just a little bit more about, about the fascia. Okay, so, so here we have the skin, all right? All right, and then underneath that, we have our superficial fascia, right here, okay? So this one here, this is the one where you like, uh, doesn't cause as much pain, but the deep fascia is the one that will sometimes cause pain and issues, okay? Especially when people stop moving. So when we stop moving uh, a part of our body, our body, whoever's in charge in there, goes, oh, okay, so we're not using this shoulder anymore. All right, so it stops feeding that fascia, and then as a result of that, people lose range of motion and mobility in that area, okay? So the most important thing is you gotta keep moving. Even if you've hurt your shoulder or anything like that, I mean, when you've broken your arm or broken your wrist, of course, you know, you can't be like wagging that wrist around because you need to let those bones knit. But you wanna make sure you move everything around. Because if you don't, if you don't, you, if you don't move it, you'll lose it. These are just some of the benefits of keeping fast and healthy. Uh, improved body symmetry and alignment. Uh, increased blood flow, flow which means uh, you get a faster recovery from any exercise or trauma. Uh, you get reduced appearance of stretch marks and cellulite, uh, scar tissue breakdown, uh, reduced risk of injury, less day-to-day -day pain, and improved sports performance. Who wouldn't want that? And I present to you my props. Yes, I know. So I want you to tell me what is, this is a cigarette by the way, it's a fake theatrical cigarette. <clears throat> so it actually doesn't do anything, but I've used it as props in a couple shows. Okay, so. What do you think is the worst thing on this chair for your health? The cigarette. The cigarette, okay. Yeah, this is pretty bad for you. This is bad, I mean, the amount of, you know, we know we know now that the cigarette companies lied to us. And indeed, this isn't good for breathing, as they used to say it was, or for pregnant women, for that matter. We used to advertise that in the 50s, that this was a great way to calm down and relax, and it was great for pregnant women. Awesome, they lied to us. Yes, this is bad, but it's not the worst thing. What else? The burger. The burger, yes. Okay, you know what? This is a spicy chicken filet sandwich from Wendy's. Don't worry, I don't get any kickbacks for advertising for them. I'm just a Wendy's man through and through. Uh, yeah, this is pretty bad. It's got a lot of fat in it, some trans fats. You know, the bun's not good for you. Yeah, we'll give you that. It's pretty bad, but it's not the worst thing. Neither are the french fries. Neither is the root beer. Okay, so what else? So this, I'm glad you asked. I'm supposed to tell the kids. I know. Well, here you think. This is the this is a dark chocolate love cake. So what you do is you add an egg to this and some butter, and then you mix it in, throw it in the microwave. You add icing on it. Delicious. So I'm one with the beer. Bad for you. Bad for you. Actually, yeah, beer is bad, but it's not the worst thing. You know what the worst thing is? The chair. Sitting on the chair. All right? Well, let's talk about that for a second, right? We talked about how fascia it's there to move, right? So if, uh, here, this is a, a dinosaur. How would you pick that up? And then so I think some people would do this, right? Some people might do this, right? I think a toddler would pick that up. Squat or kneel on the This squatting position is extremely healthy for us and how we should actually sit. And we don't. There are societies that literally will sit like this for hours. When you do this, you have no pressure on your back. You're engaging your muscles. Everything is going down to your feet. And toddlers will literally sit there for hours playing like this. But you never see adults doing this. I mean, is this not strange? But here I am, a full-grown man, squatting on the floor, playing with, I think this is a diplodocus, right? What, what dinosaur is this, do you know? Brontosaurus? 
So we forced our kids in the most unnatural position, a chair, a chair. So remember we talked about that spine being an S, right? What do you think happens when you're in a chair? Ugh, I don't know what shape that is. All right, so remember I talked to you about the head forward position, that slouching position and how bad it is for you? When you're in a chair, what happens? Naturally, people go to this. So our spine goes from a nice S position to like, I don't even know that shape, like a C, let's call it, right? Okay, so when we're doing that also too, we're getting uneven pressure on those discs, okay? And then as a result of that, you've heard about like bulging herniated discs, right? That one of the main causes for that is a sedentary lifestyle and sitting down so much, okay? Um, uh, your tailbone, sometimes you find like your tailbone is really sore. That's because when you, when you sit like a C, you curl in, your tailbone has got all this pressure on it and it's not meant to have that pressure on it, okay? Um, you, you actually lose uh, lack of oxygen, you actually lose a little bit of oxygen because you can't breathe properly. When you're sitting down in a C position, right? Everybody concave your chest like this. Now breathe. Yeah, a little bit more difficult, right? As opposed to nice deep breaths, right? So, right, so let's talk about, first of all, 100 years ago, nobody spent more than two hours per day sitting, right? They were farming, they were working in a factory, whatever. They didn't sit, right? Uh, the body is not used to passive sitting for 10 hours a day. Again, we're meant to move, right? Just as we discussed with the fascia, we're meant for that to move. And when we don't move and we don't use it, we lose it, okay? So, sleeping, we're okay, depending on how you sleep, but we'll get to that. Uh, eight hours at work, office sitting, okay? One hour commute sitting in a car unless you drive to Toronto, and then that's about 10 hours. <laughs> Uh, and then two hours sitting at home again, ah, I don't know. It depend, depends how much you binge watch, I guess that would change that, okay? And then maybe five hours per day. So it's like 11 hours of sitting, okay? Which is just, again, that unnatural position that our body hates. Well, we're gonna get to um, what happens with the joints and muscles, but first of all, I'm just gonna talk about some of the other lesser known things that, that sitting does, okay? So uh, it increases uh, anxiety and depression. The risk of both depression and anxiety are higher in people who sit the most. Uh, this is because, because of the uh, mental health benefits of it, so the lack of when one spends their days sitting down rather than moving. When we move, um, we, and we move, we run, uh, we have endorphins going through our bodies, right? When we sit, those go away, okay? Uh, they're showing more and more that uh, Sitting is the new smoking in that it's causing a lot of uh, a lot of cancers, including uh, lung, uterine, and colon cancers. They don't know yet why, but they think it has something to do with the um, uh, the um, the flow of the of the lymph system. We'll get to that. Heart disease. This is actually proven to be one of the one of the main thing. Uh, it's to say that people who sit more than uh, have 147 percent higher risk of suffering from heart attack or stroke. Yeah. 147 percent risk. I mean, like, you know, that that's like, you know, you'd be better off eating a bunch of wheels of cheese, you know, than sitting down for eight hours a day. Okay. Uh, there's also an increased risk of diabetes by 104 percent. Okay. Um, uh, increased insulin resistance, and which is a precursor to diabetes, okay? Weight gain, okay? When we sit down, and especially when we sit down and conform to our chair, okay? All the muscles in our back, all the muscles in our butt, all these muscles that just disengage. So what happens is, is that when those muscles aren't disengaged, we're not burning any calories. As opposed to when we're standing, our butt is engaged, which is the gluteus maximus is the largest muscle in the body, so therefore burns the most fat. So you actually burn like 20 times the calories when you stand as opposed to when you sit. Just even just standing still. Weak legs and glutes. And that's again because when you're conforming and you're doing that C shape, this is not engaged. Okay? We're meant to walk upright. That's what we're meant to do. That's what our body likes. It likes to move, right? We get tight hips and a bad back. And again, because we're not using those muscles, they get tired. Think of it like this. If you're sitting down like this all day, go to stand up, what do you think is gonna happen? 
answer quick because I'm about to fall over. <laughs> Yeah, you're starting aging. Not only that, the hip flexors, these guys right here, they start getting shorter. And then when you stand up, it's harder to get fully erect because when we, right, we've got to make sure that we engage those. So if we're just sitting around all day, these are going to get shorter, these are going to get weaker, and as a result, slowly over time, we're going to start doing this. And then because our head is there, it's going to go like this, and then you get more and more people walking like this, way before their time. So. Let's look at this a little bit here, okay? So again, nine, 9 9.6 hours every day, okay? Um, we get an uh, increase in uh, joint pain. First of all, we have the strain neck, okay? Which almost everybody, I'm sure, at one time or another has had their neck be sore. After a tough day of work, am I just alone on this? Is that everybody now? Yeah, everybody, right? Like you feel that in here, you feel that in there, you go home, you rub your neck. Again, probably that's because of your posture. Okay, uh, we get a lot of back pain as a result of that. Um, and it's one of the most common is right up here because when we're relaxed like this, we have two, we have muscles right around here called the rhomboids, okay? And when they're constantly in a stretched position, all right, when we go try and go back to normal, they're not strong enough to pull our shoulder blades back and get us in a right position because we've overstretched them too much. These are tight black cold cancer and the lower back pain, which is huge. Because what we have, again, going back, we have those lovely discs there, right? Which there, when our spine is in an S, the, the, it's all taking all that, the, all that shock. But as soon as you go into that C, it's uneven. And then as a result of that, you get like these disc bulges and stuff happening. All right. So here, this is a better example of it here, okay? All right, so when this person is on here, so we're getting squash disc under high pressure, okay? Uh, um, and, it, and, and because we're rolling our spine underneath, our tailbone's going underneath, and as a result of that, we're getting all this pain in the back. Okay, as opposed to sitting properly. Okay, see how we got a little bit more of a, a of a curve there, right? We're getting even disc pressure. That's the thing about these guys here. These are the discs. Okay, is they need to have even pressure on them. When they have uneven pressure, or something unnatural. If you're doing this, you're doing this. You're causing unnatural, unnatural pressure in those discs. And it's not even, and then it doesn't know what to do, and eventually you're gonna have pretty serious problems. Remember we just talked about the discs, right? Everybody following so far? So when we're lying down on our backs, okay, the percent of pressure is about 25%. Okay, now all this area down here, fluid is being sucked in to those discs. Now those discs, think of them like a cushion, right? Okay? And if you put water in them, it's going to make it a better cushion. What do you think happens when you take water out? It's going to be worse, right? So again, side sleeping, you know, you're in the 75 range, so you're still okay. You're still, you know, you sleep for a night, all the water goes back in your discs, you're ready to face the day. Uh, stomach sleeping, it's, oh, it's in here, but the problem with stomach sleeping is it causes neck issues. So the best way to sleep is on your back. Second best way is on your side. Standing is neutral. When we're just standing properly in proper position, our discs are not reaching water out and not pushing water in, but it's a nice neutral position, okay? This one here is 100, uh, 150, that's bending over, right? Not lifting anything. So it's unnatural, but our body can take it for small durations. Same with this. Sitting is only at 100, okay? But it's this one here, which is what people do when they're on a computer, hunched over, working all day. 275% pressure on your discs. So at the end of eight hours, your body hates you. And it's just an excruciating pain, okay? All right, so, so we're gonna talk a little bit about what I do. Um, I am a manual osteopath, as I've said. Uh, what that involves, that involves um, uh, uh, a lot of uh, different techniques and stuff, and they're all created by this guy, Andrew Taylor Still. Okay, he was born in 1828 in a log cabin uh, to a, a really large family. Uh, his father was a, uh, a physician and a minister and a frontiersman, and he would go around with him off all the little rural neighborhoods and help him, you know, cure, uh, help people. Um, he. Uh, 
he got exposed to the darker side of life. I mean, we don't see this anymore, but you know, diseases such as uh, sclera, smallpox, and meningitis like often wipe out like entire families, entire villages. You know, I mean, with with vaccinations and stuff, we don't really see a lot of that anymore. Also, with clean water and everything like that, we don't see a lot of that anymore. But he saw some pretty brutal stuff when he was younger. Uh, so, because of that, he realized that there was no treatment uh, for these devastating disease, and he realized that, you know, there must be another way. So he came up with uh, osteopathy. And the other reason he came up with that is, you've probably heard of, like, medical doctors in the old ages, like, using leeches, you know, doing bloodings, where they literally thought if you bled somebody, you would get rid of all the disease because it was demons inside their body. You know, uh, amputations were very common, and he saw a lot of that, and he was like, okay, there's gotta be a better way. So he created uh, a couple different things. So uh, one of the things we do is osteopathic massage. It's different from like uh, a regular massage with oils and stuff, um, but it is. it helps get that fascia going again. It helps get flow going into that fascia, okay? Relax the muscles. Uh, a thing I do is uh, joint mobilization. So if something's out, um, if someone's dealing with a lot of uh, back pain or shoulder pain, we can work on relaxing the muscles around it to get that that to get that uh, shoulder back going how it's supposed to be, how it's naturally supposed to be. Okay. Uh, but every 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 technique is slow and gentle. It increases range of motion, flexibility, gets blood flowing in the area again, which helps feed the fascia and keeps everything the way it's supposed to be. Uh, the other thing is uh, cranial osteopathy, which is um, uh, involves um, uh, up and down the spine. We have these things called dural tubes, which uh, have cerebral spinal fluid running up and down. And they feed our brain, and they feed our body, and they feed our spine. And when those are sometimes inhibited in any way, we can help open those up. The thing I do is, um, is when we're in alignment, our body is also happy. With being, sitting down, that is an eight hour a day, unnatural disalignment machine, that chair there, all right? When you're, when you're, out, when you're out of alignment, uh, you don't heal as fast, um, you don't, you, there's, there's pain involved with that. Um, it's just, it's not fun. It's best to be in alignment. We take a lot of, of beatings in life, whether it be from sitting in a chair or working hard at the farm or whatever it is, and this helps that once you're realigned, everything comes a lot easier. All right? So first of all, we're gonna do, if you have no choice and you are having to sit down all day, one thing you can do is sit smarter, okay? So you can get a lovely chair like this. Ooh. Now this thing's great because it, uh, it reminds me, so when I, so it's really hard for me to, to, to slouch in this chair because it's kind of got these pokey things that are like, hey, fix your posture, dude, right? So I can be, so I can sit like this for a couple, you know, for like 20 minutes or so. But then after that, what, do you, what else do you think I have to do? So even if I'm sitting properly like this, that helps, but what is the most important thing? And no, it's not chair spins, as fun as they are. Yeah, get up and move. Everybody get up. It's been about 20 minutes. Everybody get up, move around a little bit. When you're, even when you're sitting properly, you know, you're engaging your stomach a little bit. You're engaging the back. You're engaging, you're engaging your uh, glutes. You're, uh, it's a lot easier to breathe. It's a lot e easier for everything. It's just the way to go. This, no. This day. Uh, my thing with stretching is if it feels good, go for it. Just don't overdo it. Don't push yourself beyond what you're what what you're capable of, and don't go fast. So you never want to grab your neck and go, because that's when people get injured. You always want to make sure it's slow and gradual. So beware of the chair. All right. And lastly, James Brown was right. Get up off that thing. Dance till you feel better. Move, move, move. Most important. Thank you so much.